Oh, hi, everyone. All right. All right. Um, here, my name is Alman Ghanem, and I'm here to speak to you all about the path to inclusive design in video games, or more specifically, part of the path because inclusion encompasses many aspects. I'm also the user research manager at Ubisoft Toronto, which means I spend a lot of my time working with designers, helping them to make informed decisions by providing actionable insights. And in case you're not familiar with us, uh, we're a video game developer, and uh, we're responsible for making games from a variety of different franchises. That includes uh, Splinter Cell, Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, and Watch Dogs, just to name a few. And uh, these are all open world video games. These are games where you can kind of explore these vast worlds, often historic recreations, and you can kind of explore where you want, do what you want, and engage in different types of activities. And above all, we want people to have fun in the worlds that we've created. We want them to like what they're doing, to engage in the activities. And this is true for adults and kids because we have diverse audiences. But this doesn't always happen. Uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes, uh, and you can, uh, with this person here, they're either angry or frustrated. Uh, sometimes there can be a mismatch between the design and the experience. Why do these mismatches even occur? Well, um, like I said, our worlds are large. Uh, this is uh, Far Cry Primal, an open world video game, and you can kind of explore uh, these uh, different paths. You can go where you want at your own pace, at your own leisure. And one of the challenges for us is identifying what do people actually do here, because they can do whatever they want. But also, these experiences are lengthy. Uh, People can spend dozens of hours, even up to 100 hours or more, depending on the game, depending on the person. So it's a challenge to identify what do people do here. But also, our teams are multidisciplinary. Um, that's, this is Ubisoft Toronto there in the picture, or in the video. But we also have uh, teams worldwide that can work on the same experience. But there's something I want you all to keep in mind here. These are all people who are designing an experience that they think is fun for somebody else. But if there's one thing that we can be certain of is that what I think is fun or what I like is going to be different from what you think is fun or what you like. And that's a whole other challenge. But also, our players are diverse. There are over 23 million people who play video games to a certain extent in Canada alone. And these are all people with unique backgrounds and needs. And as developers, we need to be intentional about the experiences that we want to provide. Otherwise, we can end up excluding our users. So what can we do to ensure that we're not excluding people, to ensure that we're inclusive well, there are different things that we can be done here. The first is gather feedback and do so early. Do so at a point where it's not too late, because if it is too late, then you become locked into a design, and you're therefore reluctant to make change. The second thing is to just collect data that is reliable and accurate. To use scientific methods to have a consistent profile of users to ensure that uh, you follow standard processes and that allow would allow us to iterate over time. And also to just test with different users, different groups, different backgrounds, and different individuals. And in doing so, you can identify specific mismatches, unique ones, and the most complex mismatches in the experience. And by fixing those, you can actually improve the experience for everyone. You can make it usable for everyone. But I'd like to give you all examples of what this looks like at Ubisoft. So uh, this is our usability lab. Uh, here we have a couch uh, with a one-way mirror and a TV mounted on the wall. And the ideas were simula simulating a living room type setup. And this room allows us to do one-on-one -on -one interviews following a think aloud protocol, essentially where our players or participants are speaking out loud the entire duration of the session. And doing so allows us to kind of gauge their understanding. Um, and this allows us to dive deep into specific aspects but also to evaluate their use of the physical space. Uh, there are controllers there on the table, so we can see how they use the controllers, how they press the buttons. But also keep in mind, uh, an adult will use a controller different than a child, for example. Uh, this is our appreciation lab. So this is a large room with uh, multiple stations. They're broken out into rows. And by having it this way, we can test with multiple users all at once. And we have different tools here. We have surveys, uh, telemetry, eye tracking, and some more. But doing so allows us to gauge what players like, but also their behavior as well, how they interact with our systems, how they consume them over time. 
And again, I want to give you all an example, a concrete one about what this looks like. So here's a clip from an actual test session where a player with low vision uh, is struggling to read the screen. And I know the player's blurred out there, but they're actually leaning in there to try to read the text on the screen. And in their written feedback, they mentioned that they had a hard time reading the text because it was small, because of some poor contrast. So if we zoom in here and we try to break this down into its elements, uh, elements of this interface, and using UX principles and heuristics, we know to look at different things, such as the size and color of the text, its background color and opacity, its location on the screen, uh, how the items are grouped, whether those items are even relevant, and the contextual action, that X button down there at the bottom, is it where it's located, is it even noticeable? And doing it this way, we can identify elements of the experience that might be not as conducive. And to be honest, looking at that gray text there, if we did increase the size, if we improved the contrast there, I think we would make the readability of this interface better for that player with low vision, but not just for them, I think for everybody as well. And that's the point I wanna leave you all with here today, that games are a reflection of our social and physical context, that just like the built environment, that reflects our understanding of accessibility and disability, so too in video games. And as developers, we need to be intentional about the experiences that we want to provide, otherwise we risk excluding our users. But we can prevent this, at least by collecting feedback, doing it early, by using scientific methods to make sure that we are systematic in our processes and that which will allow us to iterate, but also by testing with different groups of users so that we can identify the most severe mismatches and hopefully improve it for everyone and make it usable for everyone. There's a lot of challenges ahead, but at least the path forward is clear. Thank you very much.